Hey guys, Riley Owen here. Welcome to this documentary about Mickey and Mary. You may know who they are and you may not. But one thing's for sure, they are forgotten. A forgotten dynamic duo in the entertainment comedy world. Like I said, I've been a fan of them for a long time. And their work. Hints that right there. Ah, this poster. You see Mickey and Mary there as children. Mickey and Mary. They're names that, as far as I'm concerned, go together like bread and butter. Personality-wise, and of course name-wise. Let's take a look at Mickey and Mary, their story, and how one of the funniest duos in all of film comedy became utterly forgotten. Parts to be machined are clamped in fixtures on the table. Thank you, Mr. Bergman. Starting motion picture news of 1938. I'm Greener, and he's Buckwheat. Oh, honey, old man, that's me. The Hour Gang Comedies, or The Little Rascals as it's known today, was really, it was a great way of propelling kid actors. These kids are the stars. They run the world, and any and every adult is the villain. Part of the genius of Hour Gang is how it captures childhood like no other film series could, and has for that matter. I mean, we see that with the dozens of ripoffs. Every kid in the series got a chance to shine. That's something a lot of people miss. They tried their swing at everyone from Sammy Morrison to Peggy Cartwright, even little Farina. So who comes into the picture? Mickey Daniels. Mickey's father was already an established performer, and when Mickey's father got to work on our gang, Hal Roach recommended his son, Mickey, for a part. Mickey's face alone seemed to go unnoticed, as both Mickey and his father roamed the busy streets looking for work. One day, they stopped at the Howl Roach studio. Ten minutes later, Mickey signed a contract. And thus, Mickey Daniels was in. Within a half a dozen shorts of appearing in the Hour Gang comedies, Mickey had already made a name for himself in the gang with his personality, ingenuity, physical comedy, and yes, freckles. By 1923, Mickey Daniels was the main comedic figure of the Hour Gang series, but there was one more thing that happened in 1923 that turned Mickey the character from a laugh a line to relatable. Mary Cornman. Mary Cornman joined the gang in 1923 at age 9. Mary was no stranger to show business. Her father was a movie producer, and she certainly wasn't a stranger to Mickey, 
In fact, they were neighbors and friends of the family. There's no question the two had chemistry, which is why from her first Hour Gang film, she would have already established herself as Mickey's girl. The success of the Hour Gang comedies in those days largely owed to Mickey and Mary. There were many changes over the two decades those films were made, and the first big hit to the series was when Mickey Daniels left the gang. With his last short being Thundering Fleas, Mary left shortly thereafter with her last short being in 1926 with the fourth alarm. The Hour Gang series now had its first low point. With no leader, girl love interest, or freckled face personality, director Bob McGowan had a solution. In the spring of 1926, a young boy by the name of J.R. Smith was pulled into the gang. He was out to fill Mickey's shoes, though it became prevalent really fast that this was the wrong choice. And though he did great, Little J.R. Smith just didn't have what it took to be the replacement leader they were looking for. Soon thereafter, Jean Darling became the next love interest, but this time as a love interest to Joe Cobb, who was the gang leader until Jackie Cooper came along in 1930. Both Mickey and Mary got steady roles in films after Our Gang. Mickey in particular was a regular in many Roach films. How Roach took a look at Mickey and Mary's chemistry after a while and wanted to make something new of it. And when it came time for Mickey and Mary to reunite as teenagers, they took the chance, and that's where our next chapter begins. The public refused to forget Mickey and Mary, as seen in this Hollywood newsreel, and a funny one at that. I suppose we're still acting like kids, even if we are growing up. I'm 16 now. And I'm 15. We're both old enough to know better. Hal Roach took a look at Mickey and Mary and added stars Dave, Gertie, Dorothy, Betty, and Alabam, forming the boyfriends. Oh, Mickey, this is my sister, Mary. Hi, babe. Quite well, thank you. Mr. Daniels, at your service. <laughs> In replace of the now failing Harry Langdon series was The Boyfriends, a comedy about a group of teenagers and their typical situations. Sort of a spin-off of our gang, you can see Mickey and Mary are full center. Everyone was excited to be a part of this, especially Mary Corman. Gee, Mary, you're sure a regular guy. Come on, ditch this gang and let's go out together. Oh, I just couldn't. They need me. Ah, oh, they're always needing something. Mary, did you ever think about going to the South Seas and being a beachcomber? You know, sort of light housekeeping? Don't be silly. Have some candy? <laughs> Come on, Mary, hurry. Oh, all right. But after 15 films in the series, Hal Roach had some news. The Boyfriends was doing terrible at the box office. In fact, the ratings were so low, 
they stopped it right there, and the boyfriends faded into obscurity. Mickey and Mary both were once again out of work. What does a struggling actor do in Hollywood? Well, get more roles. Mickey was able to land small parts in feature films, like The Dummy, This Day and Age, and the award-winning It Happened One Night. He didn't get credited for any of his roles in pictures, getting him nowhere and unnoticed. It was tragic. Example here from this scene from It Happened One Night. You don't even see his face. Here you are, folks. Cigars, cigarettes, chewing gum, candy, magazine. Here, boy. Yes, ma'am. A box of chocolates, please. Never mind, son. She doesn't want it. Oh, but the lady well, said... Of course I do. Eat it, mean? eat it. Well, you've got your nerve. Here, boy. But from this production still, we can see it is, in fact, himself. Murray Corman did much better, even becoming a headlining actress. What have these South Americans got below the equator that we haven't? While Mary Cornman was enjoying her life in lights, Mickey was being forgotten. I mean, looking back, think about it. It must have been tragic seeing y your childhood sweetheart acting with all these other guys, watching the other become a big, big star. It's really, it had to be hard on Mickey. Mary was getting more and more popular as Mickey was disappearing from the public eye. The two of them reunited once again for Roaring Roads, a feature film with Hal Roach. It's a big deal for Mickey, his first headlining role in a long time. Hey, you know, I can do better than that. Why don't you get out there and do it? Huh. Well, uh, I don't like to show off. <laughs> Go ahead, Tootsie. Once again, propelling the now forgotten Mickey Daniels into people's minds again. And soon, Mickey and Mary were back in our gang. Jeff. Tommy. No. Dickie. No. Mickey. What's your name? Dickie Moore? Well, I don't know Dickie anymore. I mean, I don't know any Dickie Moore. This time as adults watching over the kids. It seems like just yesterday that Mickey and Mary were kids in the Our Gang comedies.
playing adults against the kids as they remember the days when they were kids beating the adults. They appeared in two more Hour Gang comedies, Fish Hookie and Reunion in Rhythm. Reunion in Rhythm was the last film they did together. After that, their careers were over. Though Mary Corman went on for a couple more years, both her and Mickey failed to get work as actors. It seemed that the freckled faces and pretty eyes just don't attract people anymore. Both of their acting careers were in the dumps. Typecasting sure is a tough thing, and it sure did seem to plague Mickey and Mary. In fact, it seemed to end their careers. It's a sad story, but the story's not over quite yet, as we still have the post-acting career to go through, and they did some stuff in their post-acting career. So, let's go into that right now. Both Mickey and Mary appeared in Our Gang Reunions. A TV special was put together, and Mickey was in it, but Mary was not. It was short but very nice, and in another Hour Gang reunion in a newspaper, this one had Mary, but didn't have Mickey. Mickey's post-life career is kind of a mystery. He couldn't get any more acting roles and started working at a construction site in Los Angeles. There were rumors that he died on the job. He didn't die, but he did go missing. I recently had a conversation with the lovely woman. I asked her about Mickey Daniels and if she may know why he disappeared. She said that nobody had contact with Mickey, and he kind of just ran off. May seem strange and odd, but the fact is, Mickey just so happens to be that lady's great uncle. And she explained to me that it's a common occurrence in her family, as she had a cousin who did the same thing, just ran away, without telling anyone. The conversation I had with the woman was great. She did have a lot of great information, but what she didn't have was the full story. She just had pieces. You see, since Mickey ran away from home, and the fact that he was kind of forgotten means that nobody really had any info to share, including in the Ancestry app. She said he wasn't even listed. She tells me the primary reason why information about Mickey is hard to come by is because Mickey's sister, the only person alive who had any info on him, died in a car accident a while back. And info has been scarce ever since. Mickey died in 1970. In 1934, Mary Corman married a cameraman, but quickly got divorced for unknown reasons. She then married a horse trainer and was happy and devoted to him for the rest of her life. She kept close contact with her Hollywood friends and acquaintances. Mary's sister got asked if Mary was just as sweet and as loving as she was on screen, to which she replied, all that and more. Mary died in 1973 due to cancer. In my opinion, Mickey and Mary's story is one for the books. Most people don't agree with that. Obviously, it's not in any textbook you can find. But what do you think? Do you think Mickey and Mary's story was a happy or sad one? That's the documentary, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Riley Owen. Peace.